Welcome, everybody, to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. And I am your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, I talk about the four different types of freedom, time, financial, location, health, freedom. And in that light, I'm always scouring the globe, looking for entrepreneurs, influencers, thought leaders who are on the cutting edge. So today we have Nancy Erickson, and she dubs herself as the book professor. But what's really interesting is that she helps business professionals write high-impact nonfiction books that can expand the reach and increase their credibility. So today you're going to be talking here all about her story, uh, writing a book, uh, growing a business. So with that, Nancy, welcome. Thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah. And um, we connected through Podmatch and tell us, um, yeah, tell us how you got started, what you do, and we'll go from there. Well, you know, we all have an origin story, (laughs) right? And mine is not you know, I don't know, maybe it's a little bit unusual, but my original career was in high tech. And I worked for IBM and Oracle corporations as a sales manager, Um, kind of along the way. It's about probably about 17 years ago. You know, sometimes we come to a crossroads in life and things change. So for me, that pivotal moment was my father had been diagnosed with a glioblastoma, which is a terminal brain tumor. And we knew he would only live for about seven months. So I quit everything, went to be with my folks, you know, during that time. And then with my mother shortly after my father passed away. And when I came home, I was like, hmm, (laughs) what am I going to do now? You know, I don't have a job. And then I was also in the position that my children were out of college. And so I didn't have a lot of those severe financial pressures that you do as a parent when you're still educating your children. And so I thought, gosh, this is a time that I can really do what I've always loved to do, which was to write. And all I really wanted to do ever was to be a writer. I don't know why I went into engineering, but anyway, but that's what I did to, you know, help our family. But um, so I decided that maybe I should get a little bit more polished on it because it's been a long time since I'd been in school. So I went back to school and got a master's degree in writing, a master's of fine arts. And at that same time, when I graduated, I started a nonfiction publishing house, which is Stonebrook Publishing. And then I was also asked to teach on the faculty, you know, of the university where I graduated from. That I guess that's one of the advantages of being about the oldest student there, you know. Yeah, so I did that for a while. And I, I was always really drawn to nonfiction. It's Stonebrook Publishing, the first book that we published was written by a Holocaust survivor who'd gone to school with Anne Frank. And it was all the stories about their life during the time of that Nazi occupation. And so we ended up doing the book release in Amsterdam at their school, which was like really, (laughs) I was like pinching myself. What am I doing here in Amsterdam, you know? And then the next book we published was written by a woman and we ended up getting back cover endorsements for that book from Sir Paul McCartney and Cindy Crawford. And so I was like, man, I am really knowing what I'm doing. I'm just rocking along, you know, having these successes. But there was one bugaboo. And that was, we were really focused on developing materials and authors whose message would be something that was really helpful to somebody else. Like, so we've got so many problems in the world. And we kind of hardly even know how to name them anymore. They're so numerous. But I have always believed that the answers are trapped inside people like you. And that when you simply tell your story and what you know and what you've learned and what you've developed and what you've gleaned, then you become the source of two things that I think we can't live without. And those two things are hope and help. So all of our books are intended to offer hope and help to the reading audience. So we were getting a lot of manuscripts that had a seed of that in there, but they were so poorly written that we couldn't do anything with it. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, this isn't really right. These people really do have answers. So what could we do to help them to make their message, you know, packageable and marketable, et cetera. And so I took a step back and then I wrote this 
step by step by step by step by step process that takes someone who's not a writer all the way from their initial idea to the published, marketed, on you know, distributed worldwide, you know, nonfiction book. So, yeah, th- this is great. Um, and then you, we're gonna talk a little bit about the process of writing a book. Um, and uh, you know, talking a lot of clients, um, there's a lot of misconceptions about writing a book because people think that they're going to be the next uh, J.K. Rowling. But um, tell us about. Um, uh, expectation yeah and uh you know the well, purpose of writing the book yeah okay so that's a really great question we always try to level set up front you're not going to quit your day job <laughs> um i mean if you end up being successful like jk rowling who writes fiction by the way and you know she's developed whole worlds that i um <laughs> you know we've all gotten very engrossed in but when we're working with with business people where we work with people we do a couple different kinds of books we do business books that help you to really shine in your area of expertise as you're a subject matter expert on what you're doing. And so, you know, when you write a book, it should do three or four things for you. It should establish you as an expert. It should increase your credibility. It should help you to attract a following. And if you follow our process, it should help expand your business. And so, when we get into the process, I'll talk about that. But we also work with another classification of authors that I call overcomers, people who have been in life situations where, you know, they were, it it was grim, you know, but they've overcome whatever this thing is, whether it's a, you know, physical or mental or emotional or spiritual issue, they've come out on the other side and want to just reach back and help pull others up to where they are. Yeah, and um, what's uh, what's interesting is that um, you know you mentioned so many attributes of writing a book. Um, tell us how uh, the three types of business books that can build your audience. Yeah, well, there's kind of a how-to book if you want to share your expertise in that, and then there's what I call like a subject matter expert book where it's a little bit. It's not like a, here's a step-by-step process. But then there are books that you should be able to expand into other revenue producing products once you have that basic book product available. So if I can segue a little bit into how we get there, um, I can demonstrate how that's done. When we start working on your book, first of all, I want to say up front, all you have to have is an idea. You do not need to be a writer. You do not need to be a writer. Our process pulls the book out of you, and then we t- teach you how to shape it up and all. And you're writing the book; it's not ghostwriting. You're doing it, which you want to do your own book anyway, because ghostwritten books are just only as good as the questions you're asked. They end up being very flat, and they're not a good reflection of you. So we take you through this process, and what we start with is a series of foundational questions that really help you to crystallize your message. And so there are things like, you know, why are you even doing this? What's your, you know, what's your own motivation? You know, who is your audience specifically? How's that audience going to be changed as a result of taking in your material? And there's a total of about 12 of these questions and we end up distilling them down into a purpose statement for your book. And that purpose statement is one sentence. It says the purpose of this book is to do this particular thing for this specific audience. Period. You know, <laughs> and so then that's your marching orders. You know, you can't put everything you know in a book, but you can put this targeted information in it. So when we start, um, I developed a process called book mapping, which is kind of like developing mind maps for each chapter, so that. Um, And we spend a lot of time on this, you know, the preparation part. And so in order to develop your chapters, we develop them in problem solution sets. What are the problems that your audience is likely to have? And then through a very story driven methodology, we present your solutions. So fast forward to the end when your book is you know, published and distributed worldwide. Now you can start repurposing that material for other products. So because each chapter is focused on a specific 
problem, you can develop ancillary products from that. Keynotes, workshops, seminar, video training, online courses, and monetize those from the basic material that you have developed in your book. Yeah, that's very powerful. Um, you know, uh, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, um, you know, your your work with clients and, you know, you give you the chance to talk about your um, business. Uh, one thing is before that is tell us about 10 new mistakes that new authors make when writing a business book. Yeah, well, there's a lot of mistakes that people can make. And first of all, there's like there's about, you know, like I say roughly 10, but some of them off the top of my head are that you know, you don't really know what you're you're doing. And so one of the most difficult things, most difficult ways to write a book is to just start writing without a plan. Mm-hmm. And so that's a mistake to do. The second thing is most people don't know how to organize all of the thoughts and knowledge in their head to present it in a compact form that people are actually going to want to read. And so that's where that mapping process comes into play. Um, Another mistake is that people don't know how to write in a really direct manner that will reach their audience. You know, we ramble around. You would never really want to read a book that's written the way someone speaks. That's (laughs) if you've ever done speech to text and you read it back to yourself, you're like, oh, my gosh, I say, um, and, you know, and blah, 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 so much, you know, so you got to really refine your language. And the other thing is that um, I want to throw something out there about AI and writing, because there's a lot of buzz out there about chat GPT. It's can, you know, pass the bar exam for you. Undoubtedly, people think it can write your book, but there if you don't write a book that has you in it, it's not going to reach your audience. We are no longer in a world where you can stand here and tell people, this is what you should do. You (laughs) always need to really ingratiate yourself to your audience and be transparent with them. And any kind of AI software is not going to do that. It's going to be flat. It's not going to reflect you. And it's also, it, it, there's, it, that really lacks integrity. And, you know, we're professionals. We don't plagiarize. We don't present ourselves in ways that we really aren't. And so that's one of the big, it's for cheaters. You know, I mean, it is. It's great for blog articles and stuff like that. I would say use AI where you can to speed along the process, but not when you're writing your book. Because, you know, what I told you is that one of the things the book should do is increase your credibility. If someone ever found out you wrote your book with AI, that's going to do exactly the opposite and trash your credibility. Mm -hmm. So your book should be this shining beacon light of this is who I am in my work and in my life and really make you shine instead of, you know, some, you don't want to, I don't know. I don't believe in hiding anything in life. It just doesn't work out very well, but um, you're a person of integrity and you want your book to reflect that fascinating and then really looking at chat gpt it's you know there's uses um you know like i said you have to put that you know your the the ai cannot replicate at least at this point human um identity you know this but it can kind of put the groundwork in for you to it can re- regurgitate information yeah and um so this you know transition you know tell us you know you gave us a really interesting tell us you know your you know some success stories you know what clients you work best, which ones you don't work best, and how people can contact you? Yeah, well, one of the things that is important is that you have the mind share to do this and that you really want to do it. It takes about a year to write your book. And so we want you to be really committed to it. And we make it really fun too. So that, you know, it's not like, oh my God, I got to write this book. It's like, (laughs) wow, this is my time. I'm really ready to get my, my message out there and to make me um, really shine. And so um, the kinds of clients that we like to work with are those who really have a message and they want to uplift others and help others in other ways. We don't work with people who are kind of like all about me. If they're just writing this autobiography about how fabulous they are, I usually refer those to other people because that's not in fitting with my, my own mission statement of, you know, helping to uplift the world. Uh, But I would say that you really have to be committed 
both financially and in the time. It takes about a year to write your book and you probably need to uh, dedicate a half a day a week to it. Le less than that in the very first part and a little bit more than that as we get more into the writing. But um, I'm, I'm sorry, I think now I'm rambling and I can't remember what your question was. <laughs> Well, uh, what uh, what sort of clients, uh, you know... Um... Well, success stories, yes. Okay, so this is what I want to focus on. And, and it's it's how you define success. And we ask our... We work with our clients in the beginning to ask them, how are you going to define the success? If your book is going to help you to build your business, you know, how many new clients do you need to get as a result of this material for you to feel successful? You're not going to make money book sales. It takes a really long and a ton of ton of sales to do that. But if you how many new clients do you need to gain? How many speaking engagements do you need to gain? How many, you know, influence, you know, opportunities of influence do you need to gain in order to do that? So having said that, we have I can highlight a couple of our authors. One of them, her name um, is Nicole Bell. And she wrote, her book is kind of a memoir, but it's kind of like a medical memoir. She's this MIT brainiac, and she and her husband both were in the, you know, um, medical device invention business. And she noticed that he was starting to falter mentally, and it was really weird. Well, anyway, they kind of ended up diagnosing him as having um, early Alzheimer's, but she was not on board with that. She's like, he's too young. There's no family history, et cetera. Anyway, I'm going to make her very long story short. It turned out mm -hmm. that the genesis of his decline was Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. And had they intervened at the early stage where she started asking questions, it could have been, they could have intervened and he would have been, he would have recovered. Um, he, he died about a year ago mm -hmm. and at a young age. So anyway, so she has one of her great focuses in life has about education about Lyme disease. And she has been an ambassador that she's been on the Today Show. She's been in all sorts of, you know, medical journals and articles and stuff. And she's becoming a real voice for educating people about early intervention on Lyme disease. And that has fulfilled her purpose. Um, another client of mine, Jim Canfield, he wrote a book called CEO Tools 2.0. And he's a Vistage speaker. If you were familiar with the CEO mastermind groups called Vistage, and um, he has been spreading his messages. Now he sold five or ten thousand books doing that, so that was his success. But he wanted to get it. He wanted to use the book as a way of getting more speaking engagements. And for the last two years, he's been named the number one speaker in the whole Vistage worldwide. You know, and he his entryway was having a book to share. Nice, nice. Uh, I know a lot of people are interested. They may be writing their first book or just, you know, reach out to you. How can they follow you on social media, contact you? Yeah, I think the best way to do is I always like to just chat with people about what are your ideas about a book? Let's just kick it around. It's obviously no obligation. But if you go to my website, it's thebookprofessor.com. Right across the top, you'll see a click to schedule a call with Nancy. And so we'll just have a 30 minute chat. And I love to, you know, and then I can help you tell you, I can help you, you know, answer your questions, but also help you vet out your ideas. Is this really worth doing? You know, what kind of benefit would your audience receive from hearing from you? Yeah. And um, yeah, so for all the, let's thank uh, Nancy for coming onto the podcast, sharing her valuable knowledge and wisdom, you know, and um, Reach out to her on Facebook and LinkedIn and um, check out her um, website, my or sorry, mytimetrade.com. No, well, the book, book, the book professor.com. And then you can click to, to schedule a chat. Excellent. And all the all of Nancy's uh, resources will be in the links and show notes. And uh, let's thank her for uh, coming on to the show. Yeah, thank you so much.